already seen today two 10 seeds knock off a seven seed. It has never happened in the 40 year history that a 15 has knocked out a two seed in the first round. The Capital One starting lineups across the bottom of the year screen. Not only is it Clark, but Monica Sonano is also a 20 point score. They are the only team in the tournament that has two of those. A lot of experience, they are all back from their sweet 16 run a year ago when they got knocked out by UConn. Here is Clark and her first shot is good. Kristen Gillespie told us yesterday, Beth, she didn't feel like the stage was too big for this team. And they will score on their first trip. Mary Crompton is from Iowa City. Back home, one of the top three-point shooters in the country as Clark rattles one around and out. Deanna Wilson and Kate Bullman would be their biggest players at 6-2. And Bullman, actually, may spend a lot of time. They'll try some length on Clark defensively. Well, Bullman comes in as their four player, but can defend any position on the floor for them. And yes, we're talking defense, because that's what's key when you're facing an Iowa team. Crompton hits her first bucket. There are several players on this Illinois State team very familiar with Iowa City, very familiar with playing with and against Caitlin Clark. Man to man from Iowa to start this game. You're seeing the switch. So important for Juju Redmond to get going offensively. And a whistle and a foul. The other thing the Redbirds have going for them, one of the hottest names in coaching right now, Kristen Gillespie in her fifth season. She has them back on top of the Missouri Valley. She is from the K Yao coaching tree and played in the 1998 Final Four with North Carolina State. Kate Martin swoops in for the rebound. She had a monster Big Ten tournament as they matched their regular season title with a tournament crown as well. Gabby Marshall short on the shot. You're seeing some of the Redbird defensive plan to try to bracket Caitlin Clark when she crosses half court, making other Iowa players need to make shots. Runner no good for Maya Wong. She's the hometown girl from Normal, Illinois. It's a Hawkeye team that can put up some points a couple times this year, over 100. So you've either got to run selectively with them or you got to hope this thing stays in the 60s. Crompton for three, that's huge. We watched Iowa go through Illinois State's offenses yesterday, and that was one thing. They did not want Mary Crompton to even get a look from three. That's how much respect Iowa had for the sharpshooter from Illinois State. Sonano. And they're going to call the foul on the Redbirds and Deanna Wilson. On the other side for Iowa, the dean of the Big Ten coaches, now in her 22nd year, Lisa Bluter with the regular season and the tournament championships in the Big Ten Conference. And this is their time. This is their big moment. The Sweet 16 wouldn't be enough this year with everybody back. They do have Iowa State and South Carolina in their region. And potential hurdles to a Final Four. Taken away. By Illinois State, here comes Juju. She had Compton on the weak side open, but missed her. It's going to be a foul on the drive as Illinois State has shown a propensity to attack the rim. Well, great job by Wong, and I think Wong is critical for Illinois State. Had a huge final game in their win over you and I on Sunday. They need more of her offense here this afternoon. We're going to get an offensive foul off the ball, setting a screen. I think it's Jasmine McGinnis-Taylor. And it is Bowman defending on Clark. Megan Warnock will drop the two. 
you got to pick your poison when you're facing Iowa because we can talk all day long about Caitlin Clark's ability to score. But right now, Illinois State was so worried about Sonano that they're, fate, they're playing off everybody else, daring them to score. Redmond responds to the McKenna Warnock bucket. Here is Clark. Off the cross and a bit too much body and a foul. I love the game plan from Illinois State to put size on Caitlin Clark. But the problem is, is they're limited in the number of players they can truly run at her. Really key that they avoid foul trouble. Tommy Tywo, the senior from Carmel, Indiana, checks in. Here is Sonano, two defenders on her. Clark gets a look and hits. For most players, that's close enough for Kate Ballman to close out. Not for Caitlin Clark. The Big Ten's Player of the Year. Averaging over 27 a game. Crompton, good ball fake, and their best three baller has hit a couple. She's got eight of their 12. Immediately, two bodies come every time Sonano catches. So she'll kick it out to Marshall for three. Honestly, it's not like there's bad defense on the floor right now, Beth. These offenses are making the right reads, right decisions, and scoring. Bowman back to Redmond. She is good off the bounce, misses the layup. Clark, the pass. She averages eight assists and eight rebounds per game along with those 27 points. As Warnock gets the bucket. And a foul will get Juju to the line. We talk a lot about Caitlin Clark's ability to score, but she does lead the nation in assists. Tremendous court vision. Finds Warnock in They have come out energetic, enthusiastic, even at 12 apiece. Five and a half minutes in, and Redmond will get the Redbirds the lead back. Beth, this is a team that is connected. When I watched the Missouri Valley Conference Championship, all three games of theirs, this team was so connected defensively. One move, they all move, and you're seeing that today. This stage is not too big. This crowd is not too hostile. This is a very dialed-in Redbird team. It is literally a family affair for Kristen Gillespie. She has her cousin Scott on her staff, one of her assistants. Her dad and her brother have both coached in NCAA tournaments. Her grandfather, a terrific baseball coach. As Iowa turns it over. There's cousin Scott. Her nephew, Ty Van Winkle, who is uh, further down the bench. Had the honor, they were all fighting for it. Their practice players, or their managers, I should say. Who got to be Christian Clark in practice all week? And cousin Ty, or uh, nephew Ty got that honor. You're seeing Iowa switch to their 2-3 now, just trying to mix up the defenses against Illinois State. Redmond, no, and a rebound for Caitlin Clark. A couple of assists for Caitlin, her first rebound, she's got five points. A couple triples for Marshall. Junior out of Cincinnati. They are a hot team right now. Winners of seven in a row. They rallied late in the year to win a piece of the regular season championship with Ohio State and then rolled through the Big Ten tournament. Well, Beth, the lull for them was injuries. And once they got everybody back, this team really started clicking on both ends of the floor. Fouls on Mary Crompton. Well, Caitlin Clark's getting a lot of attention as soon as she crosses half court. This time gets into the body of the defender, gets the foul called on Newland. Martin. Air ball. Well, I think one of the, you know, big things, Liz Merrill had a great article on ESPN.com this week, you know, talking about the adjustment 
When you've got a superstar player on your team, it may take a while to figure out how all the other pieces fit around her and how she meshes with everybody else's game. And that was probably something the Hawkeyes were going through the first half of the season. Well, absolutely. You say everybody was back. It's still different. Think about how much more national attention Caitlin Clark has gotten this season. But what I love about it was a quote from Kate Martin, who just had the block. Clark off the bounce and another foul. She's already drawn three on Redbird defenders. Okay, Martin, I was going to pay you off with your quote, but this block's <laughs> even better. Coming from the weak side with the rejection. But I want to give Kate Martin credit because for there to be a player like Caitlin Clark, it takes a team. And Kate Martin said to her teammate, she said, we need to remember that the crown she wears, that she carries, is heavy. And my mind was blown thinking that this is a college-age student with that kind of awareness about her teammate. Hats off to this team. It just speaks to the culture that Lisa Bluter and her staff have built. No woman has ever led the country in scoring and assists. She leads the nation in triple doubles, in free throws made. She gets to the line an awful lot. No one in the last 20 years, men or women, has been the leading scorer in the country as a freshman and a sophomore. And that's what Clark is doing right now. Nine points here in the first quarter. And this and cheerleading as well. Two, three matchup zone. And she just waited for that pass. Clark with the rebound. And that's going to be the second on Juju. Kaylin Clark just sits back in the tandem, waits for the pass, shoots the gap, and watch how she cuts the angle to make sure the defense couldn't get there in time. Such high basketball IQ by the sophomore. 87% free throw shooter. We saw Malia Boston in South Carolina with, we'll see, Melissa Smith, the reigning Wade Trophy National Player of the Year at Baylor, coming up later on. Her numbers are even better this year. And then there's Clark, the three front runners. They may end up splitting Player of the Year honors. Great to see them all in the college game. And you may see Clark Boston head to head if they both continue on their path into the regional final in Greensboro. Well, I'm sure there's some cyclones up the road that want to have something to say in that matter. Here by no. Rebounded by Kale Newland, senior out of Kansas City. They haven't scored in the last four and a half minutes here. Final minute of this opening set. Good flash by Bowman off the window, banks it in. Bowman is just a young lady as a sophomore, now playing her natural position as a four, and they really utilized her in the half-court offense. Nice to see her get on the scoreboard. Clark, yes, you do have to defend her way out there on the feathers. Off the hesitation. Bowman got a piece of that. Good defense. Shot clock's off. Not sure if the players see it yet. Now they'll get the shot up. Can they get a second up? And a held ball with 1.2 seconds to go. And it will go to Iowa. Well, Kristen Glassman's pretty much at half court, making sure her players knew that she wanted the last shot. So, yes, they knew, Beth. Iowa content with the 21-15 lead. First quarter in the books. First round in the Greensboro Reed. Second round matchup. South Carolina and Miami in Columbia on Sunday afternoon. The Gamecocks, the number one seed in the Greensboro Regional. The uh, 
the favorites according to both ESPN BPI and the Caesar Sportsbook. South Carolina and Stanford, the two teams to beat. Of course, the Cardinal, the defending national champions, and they are the favorites out in the Spokane region. Crompton, boy, has she got the hot hand early. And a big smile from her head coach, Kristen Gillespie. Sonano, her first bucket inside. Two feet in the paint. If you're in that little restricted area arc, it's too late if you're trying to defend Sonano. Caitlin Clark had 11 points, three rebounds, three assists in that first half. Or first quarter, excuse me. She puts it And there's another steal. She's got a couple of them as well. Looking to get to the bucket, ladies, and up and in. has turned this town upside down. They sold out their regular season finale and beat Michigan. Another sellout here for the NCAA tournament, first and second rounds. Deanna Wilson had a couple of looks. This is why the range misses. Good flash to the middle by Bowman. Cannot put that away. Just 30% shooting now for Illinois State Marshall. Okay. Had a couple of threes in that first quarter. Well, Beth, you're seeing the wide open looks for a lot of Iowa players because you're seeing Illinois State so focused on Clayton, Caitlin Clark. They're crowding the paint, trying to stop transition, and the rest of the Illinois, uh, Iowa players just have to spot up. Long rebound, Brompton will get there. Wilson faces up and hits. Junior out of St. Louis, all Missouri Valley this year. I love that Illinois State's not trying to force shots. They're reading and reacting, but just not as well as Iowa at the moment. McKenna Warnock to Kate Martin. Well, that's gonna be one of the big things, right, Christy? Is Caitlin Clark is going to be at the top of everybody's scouting report. How do the other four on the floor do if they take Clark out for a period of time or do if they're feeding off of Clark? Well, as we've seen, it's not like Caitlin Clark's going to four shots. She leads the country in assist. We know Sonano can score down low. It is the other three perimeter players, and they're all capable of putting up big numbers. They just so many times know who the hot hand is, and normally that is Caitlin Clark. They are the best shooting team in the country, field goal percentage and free throw percentage. They're third in assists. They're number two in the country in scoring. And they put up better than 80 a game. There's a block from Warnock. And a steal by Clark. Good anticipation. Leads to the lane in the way. 15 in the first half for Caitlin. side and here they come again. And Juju Redmond's back on the floor for Illinois State with those two fouls. Juju the leading scorer in the Valley this year. One for four thus far. She'll pull up mid-range and knock it down. I like that Kristen Gillespie has put Juju Redden back in the floor. You can't afford for this to get to double digits. Addie O'Grady with the nice spin and bucket. Time gaps, and once she gets to half court, she's off to the races. 11 points. They had a nice turnout. The Redbirds sold out all their tickets, Scuddy, and they wanted to sell more, but of course, the Iowa fans beat him to the punch. And a sold out Carver Hawkeye Arena today. What a tremendous environment we are in here today. Can't say enough about the atmosphere. These young ladies deserve to play in front of crowds like this. Winner gets the 10 seed Creighton, an upset winner over Colorado earlier. 
Caitlin Clark, 15 points in 14 minutes. To go along with four assists, three rebounds, and three steals, doing a little bit of everything. She puts so much pressure on a defense. That time, just subtly crossing the midline, going across the grain, which forces the entire defense to rotate and shift, leaves your teammate wide open. Bowman, three, got it. Boy, they're gonna need more of those. Open things up. I'm a big believer, when you're undersized, when you're that slower seed, you've, if you can get hot from three, you have a shot at an upset because you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the paint against a team like Iowa. You've got to knock down your threes. Martin, work on Juju. Weak side rebound, Maya Wong. Great defense by Warnock, knowing that Juju Redmond doesn't want the three. If she's left wide open, we'll take it. Plays her for the drive. Redmond kicks out. Trying to get a touch for Brompton, and it's Redmond working in the lane. Blocked by Martin. Clark defended by a couple. Warnock slips the screen and then is called for the charge. 4.20 to go, Iowa. The two seed in the Greensboro region in front. DePaul in the uh, first four, that's something new this year in the women's tournament. 64 teams up to 68 with the first four games middle of this week. Juju Redmond for the Missouri Valley Champs. They led uh, the league most of the season, had a tough schedule to finish the year and fell to the four seed and then rallied to win the tournament with a couple of upsets. And as Martin took an inadvertent hit to the face. And the foul will be called on Deanna Wilson, her second. She will depart, replaced by McGinnis Taylor. The count right now on Caitlin Clark, 15 points in 15 minutes. Three assists, three steals, three rebounds, and nary a turnover to be found. That's big for Caitlin. She averages five turnovers a game since she's got the ball in her hands so much with so many decisions to be made for this offense. And Beth, those turnovers usually happen early in games. That's what's so tremendous about her performance so far here this afternoon. Martin. Trying to draw that third foul, and Redmond defended it well. And Beth, Illinois State's offense right now is getting them open looks. They just have hit this little cold patch against the zone, getting the ball to the high post, kicking out the shooters. They just haven't been able to knock it down. Yeah, just 28% shooting in this quarter. Redmond gets the short corner and gets it up over Clark. Juju, fifth year out of Chicago, played for the legendary Dorothy Gators at Marshall High School before going on to win a junior college national championship. Sonano assist Clark, and there's a steal. It's already the fifth of the half. Clark rifles one into Sonata. Tremendous body control and use of the right angle off the backboard. Well, that's one to describe it. Other one is just tremendous hands because you got to catch it or wear it. That pass was bolted in by Caitlin Clark. Great finish by Sonato. I went for physics. You went for chemistry on that one. The strength of Sonato. You know, I hear Iowa's got a pretty good football team. And in the moment, I was thinking, wow, you got a nice little quarterback receiver combo here. Sedano, the senior out of Watertown, Minnesota, leading the country in field goal percentage. The Yang, the Clark's Yin. Redmond 
heating up. Well, and look out, because Redmond scores in bunches. Two straight trips now for Illinois State where Redmond's been able to convert. Chiwo, no. And Illinois State can get it back down into single digits. They jump to the shooter. Bowman will get an open look. No. And a foul going to be called on McGinnis Taylor. And that is her third. So the Bigs having some issues for Illinois State. I believe that's the fifth foul that Clark has drawn this half. Well, you have such a small margin of error when you're trying to get the upset. And that margin of error shrinks dramatically when you get into foul trouble. We've already talked about how Kristen Gillespie's game plan was to take the bigger guard. We're talking about Juju. We're talking about Kate Bowman. So that opens up the middle. You can't afford for your bigs to also get in foul trouble. Sonano, who's such a good passer out of the post, gets it back out to Marshall. Clark thought about a three from the feathers of the Hawkeye logo. Open down court is Bowman. Bowman unattended. They've not been able to dial that up. Four of 16 from outside the arc. What's well, worse when you think about Mary Thompson's three of five. So the rest of the team. Sonano again, a bullet pass. She gets some miles per hour on that thing. <laughs> Sonano has hit all four of her shots, nine points. Clark with six assists in this first half. That's picked. Taiwo got it. And it's trouble time for Illinois State. Need something positive to close the half, and they're not going to get it. Lisa Bluter says, give me one good one to end it. I think Clark's got that in her repertoire. I wonder if Illinois State, well, they've got a foul to give. They may try to do that to keep them from scoring. Here, they're going to run the double at Clark. Kaitlin dribbles away from it, gets a look, no good. 43-29, Iowa at the half, the two seed in front of the 15 seed, Illinois State. Clark's half, 15 points in all 20 minutes. Winner gets the 10 seed, Creighton, in the second round here on Sunday afternoon. And the story of the score, plenty in the paint for Iowa. After a good start for the Redbirds, they cooled in that second quarter and a whole lot of Clark and Sonata. You have, if you're going to beat Iowa, you've got to make the other three players on the floor have to be the primary scoring threats. Not to say they can't, but you've got to take away the strength of Iowa. Juju Redmond. And swing it around to Bowman. And now Wilson. Back to Bowman. Open look for three. They just have not been able to dial that, in, dial that in with the exception of Mary Crompton, who hit three threes in the first half. Well, Beth, to your point, she's three of five. The rest of the team is now one for 11 in the game. And Iowa is giving them. They're sitting in that 2-3 zone. And Illinois State is getting the looks. They just can't knock them down. Offensive foul called on Sonano off the ball. That is her second. Iowa going back to man and Caitlin Clark is face guarding Mary Compton now. Redmond spins, pulls up, front rims it. Clark gets the outlet. 
Waits for a Sonano screen. Sonano rolls. Sonano scores and one. Assists Caitlin Clark. Well, Beth, pretty good defense by Illinois State. They switch on the on ball, but even better offense. Great, tremendous court vision by Caitlin Clark to find her best buddy, Sonano, off the roll and the finish. Monica is now five for five from the floor. And that adds a free throw to it. But at this point in the season, aren't we surprised when Monica Sonano misses a shot? <laughs> best in the country, field goal percentage. <laughs> Clark, by the way, that was her seventh assist. Open look for Maya Wong. In and out. And that'll go to the Hawkeyes. And Kristen Gillespie has to feel good about the looks that the offense is generating. They just need to see the ball go through the, through the net for them. They've missed their first three of this third quarter. Martin, got it for three. And the lead is ballooned to 20. Okay, Martin coming off a great Big Ten tournament where she averaged over 12 points a game and seven rebounds. As Iowa gets deeper in the tournament, they're gonna need that third and fourth consistent score. Clark. Double team comes. Caitlin Clark landed hard on the deck, slow to get up. She's waving off the sub, says she's okay. Well, first of all, the heady part to cover up the ball was the first thing, and then you just see her go down, unfortunately, goes to the knees first as she hits the ground. She'll stay in the game. Dad and her brothers looking on. All in attendance. Marshall, open look. Got it. That's her third triple. Timeout, Redbirds. Seamlessly, it never sticks. Extra pass, Gabby Marshall for three. And the impossible brought to you by Adidas. Second year in a row, she is the leading scorer in the country. She is also on pace to become the first woman ever to lead the nation in scoring and assists. Fastest ever to 1,500 points. She's got five triple doubles. Her numbers, folks, through the first couple of seasons, on par, if not better, than what Sabrina Unescu was putting up. Of course, Sabrina's sophomore campaign, they reached the Elite Eight, or just shy of the Final Four, and then the next two years, Unescu won National Player of the Year honors. Now, that's the kind of stuff that Clark has been putting up. She's uh, on the bench right now, coming out of the timeout. Juju Redman, the runner off the window is good. But when it comes to Caitlin Clark, it says so much about her that we stake only 20-something points <laughs> at the end of a ball. You know, and what I love is, and we're seeing on full display today, is just the versatility of her game. We're seeing the defense, obviously the court vision. Sonano's just so good down low, but Redbirds make a stand there. Wilson with the block. Oh, I'm sorry, with no, the foul. No, they actually called the foul yeah. on her there. That is Deanna's third. So Sonano back to the line. Five for five from the floor, two for two. Now three for three from the stripe. 13 points and six rebounds. She'll sub out, Addie O'Grady will check in. There's a team now, the Hawkeyes, eight of eight from the line.
Mary Compton is just being shadowed by anybody that's on the floor guarding her right now. It's not a box and one, but they are face guarding her because they don't want her to get the touch. Had two Hawkeyes jumping out at her and then a little handsy there from Kylie Fierbach, the sophomore out of Sycamore, Illinois. And that'll be her first. And I've been impressed with Crompton. It's one thing to be a three-point shooter, but she's not getting them by kickout. She has been running all around the half court, running off the screens just to get her touches. Ball calling for a Wilson screen. And an open look here. Short on the shot from Newland. And it'll stay at this end. Caitlin Clark will return for the Hawkeyes. That'll get Kate Bowman back into the game for Illinois State. This is where the Redbirds need to get some points on the court. These special situations, sideline out of bounds, out of bounds play, execute and try to score. And instead it's a turnover, Clark. Bounce pass to O'Grady and a foul. Iowa put so much pressure on you in terms of defense because of how they push the pace. This time O'Grady run the floor, didn't finish, but probably just importantly draws the fourth foul on Wilson. O'Grady 82% at the line for the freshman out of Aurora, Colorado. Twenty-eighth trip to the NCAA tournament, their best finish. They reached the Final Four in 1993 under C. Vivian Stringer. I, mean, I think that speaks to what Lisa Bluter has been able to reestablish here at Iowa. We know how good this program was under C. Vivian Stringer, and now she's taken it, and now she has aspirations of a national championship. Well, and I think it says a lot, too, that Iowa, you know, when you look at these brackets, the Hawkeyes were involved probably in the game, the most anticipated game of the tournament last year. It was Caitlin Clark against National Player of the Year Paige Beckers of UConn. This year, the buildup is certainly towards Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston head-to-head -head South Carolina and Iowa, which could happen in a regional final in Greensboro, North Carolina. She's a big part of it, and the fact that this team has gelled around her and the coaching staff has done such a good job of preparing them to be at their best late in the season speaks volumes about what they've been able to build here with sellout crowds. Well, culture doesn't just happen, and, and that's the thing. Anyone who is known as a leader and her staff knows its team. And as we watch O'Grady score, I wonder, is O'Grady the next great post player to come through this program? They just... Tim Jan Jensen as the post coach just continues to develop but the circling up after every shoot around before the game it's not about the X and O's it's about culture and we were able to listen to that today and that's why I say you can have great players that doesn't mean you're going to win we've got a timeout here in Iowa City under five to go Hawks by a million, well, not, not exactly a million, but uh, they've been stretching the lead here in this second half. And for Caitlin Clark, 15 points, seven assists, four rebounds. Sinano with 14. And contributions from just about everybody else. Juju Redmond having herself a nice afternoon. 13 now for her. Tyro's triple's good. And why is Tyro open in the corner? Caitlin Clark's dribble penetration pulled the defender. Another assist for Clark. Redmond knocks down another mid range. She's got 15. Nice young player. Clark steps back, short. And taken away. Marshall 
Tries on her own and draws the foul. You know, but we're seeing a lot of fouls from Illinois State, especially here in the third quarter. And I wonder how much of that is fatigue. You're talking about a team that had to win three games in three days. Their conference championship was on Sunday. They finished that game. They had an hour to celebrate, jump back on the bus to return to Bloomington normal. The field's announced. Very quick turnaround for them to come and play one of the top, or I should probably say, one of the hottest teams in the country in Iowa. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, for a lot of the Power Five leagues, their conference tournaments are actually two weeks prior. So for some of them, they don't like the fact they're off for 10 to 14 days. And then for others, a lot of the mid-majors are still playing up to this weekend in their finals. And so it is a very short turnaround to get ready. Well, we asked Lisa Bluter, how did, what was the focus? How did you spend those two weeks? She said, we did a lot of scrimmaging. Mm -hmm. And, and I, as soon as she said, I'm like, because you're hot, you want to keep the routine. And, and I loved what she did because, again, you want to play. You don't want to get out of, a, out of that great chemistry that you've developed on the floor, especially on the offensive end. She also said they gave, she gave the team three days off. And we asked, was that for spring break? And she said, well, not exactly, no. Uh, this is a, <laughs> a focused group that is locked into the task at hand. So much of winning in March is also about the emotional state, the mental state. You've got to keep that fresh and under control to be able to win consistently. Winner of this one will get Creighton in the second round. The Blue Jays, an upset winner over Colorado. The 10 beat the 7 earlier today. In anticipation of another sellout crowd on Sunday afternoon, Clark shuffled the feet. And is that her first turnover? It is. Yep. Yeah in 25 minutes. It, it, it's just remarkable, the ball's in her hands so much and that is the first turnover. We are 27 minutes into the game and, and the same thing goes for Juju Redmond. She handles the ball, the ball's in her hands as much as it is Caitlin Clark's for Illinois State. Redmond's runner, got it. Good job to tuck it into her body and then get the shot up one-handed. Sonato running the floor, around and out in a foul. Five for five from the floor, four for four from the line. The women's championship presented by Capital One. First round coverage, of course, continues through the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, and then the final four in Minneapolis. We've got you door to door, wall to wall, you name it. You can find it on the ESPN networks. Sonano, a perfect. Five of five on the floor, six of six on the free throw line. Free throw line. Should improve her standing uh, as the best field goal percentage shooter in all the land. Redmond, she scored 10 of their 12 points this quarter. The kick out Wong looking for three, and she's fouled and will get three free throws. Great job by Juju Redmond to start the drill penetration, got downhill, pulled a defender, kick out. That's the most open Mary Compton has been this entire game. I'm sorry, Wong. Graduated high school in three years, and then redshirted as a freshman to get accustomed to things at Illinois State. She has doubled her production this year in her first season as the starter at the point. Well, I really don't think Illinois State wins this past Sunday over you and I without the offensive performance of Mary Wong. Clark, count it.
Just had been too long before Clark got a shot opportunity, cuts to the rim, through the contact. And she's like, oh yeah, Miss Official, make sure that one counts. It will hit the free throw, 18 now, with eight assists for Caitlin. Bowman's got it. I can't decide if it's a triangle two or if they're yeah. just face guarding the two players. They've done this a little bit now here in the second half against Illinois State. Now left to Clark, leaving, looking, sneaking through a couple of defenders for the land. And got a tip. Able to knock it loose. Caitlin Clark gets the outlet and is so efficient with the dribbles, not just scoring, splitting and kissing off the glass. Just the smallest of seams, she found it and got to the bucket and now has 20 points in 27 minutes. On 12 shots, seven of 12 from the floor. Good rebound for Crompton. Long drives and hits, fouled by Clark. Well, there's no quitting the Redbirds here. Wong putting her head down, getting into the body of Caitlin Clark to draw that foul in the and one. Second on Clark, and Wong back to the free throw line. Three for three, and now four of four. I will deep. Good. She's got eight off the bench for the senior. Redmond comes to get it. That's off of Redmond's leg and the turnover. We can talk a lot about the Iowa offense, but their defense just then said something. They were not going to let Illinois State get that shot. Shot clock is off here to end the third. Clark gives it up, comes back to get it. Bullman defends. The step back, Clark. They're trying to bring the double. Caitlin goes to the baseline. Floater is no good. One second left. Clark the lob, O'Grady, got it up and in! Assist number nine on the lob. Once lead, heading into the fourth quarter. The winner gets a date right back here at Carver Hawkeye with Creighton, the 10 seed, on Sunday afternoon. They upset Colorado earlier today. 84 to 74, they went 12 of 12 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter to sew it up. They had four players scoring in double digits, led by Morgan Molly with a career high 20. And a big win for the Blue Jays. This Iowa City action for the Birds, three of our mascots here, along with the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, in the aviary section of your local zoo. History. And it's, it's the fourth time in a row. It's a difficult matchup to defend that motion offense. If this score holds, I mean, it's going to be offensive full display. That's for sure on Sunday. 
And oh, by the way, one of those first round wins four years ago was against Iowa, pre Caitlin Clark. And they will be trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the first time. Clark dribbles through traffic, gets inside, and gets fouled. Well, Beth, you just used the term pre Caitlin Clark. I'm wondering, are we at some point, this is how transformational this young lady is, are we going to start referring to BC? BC, yeah. They, they had tremendous success here. They've been in the Final Four once, and I think the expectation is now, with the way this team has come together, that, that, is, the, that is the game plan this year. Potential roadblocks would be Iowa State, a team they lost to earlier this year, and then, of course, the overall number one seed in the tournament, South Carolina. Well, and I think Creighton at the moment wants to have something to say about that as well. Yes. South Carolina, we already know their second round game on Sunday will be hosting Mar uh, Miami. And it should be a defensive yeah. slugfest. It was a, a 25th consecutive triple-double for Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina's win earlier today. Bowman able to tip it to herself. And now down on the deck, Hellball will stay with the Redbirds. You know, statistically, Bowman's not going to get a lot of credit for her defense here this afternoon, but she's done a tremendous job. Got a steal a minute ago when Sonano had a mismatch down low that if she hadn't, would have been a sure two for Iowa. The inbound goes right to Marshall running with Clark, and Caitlin will get the finish assisted by Gabby. 22 now for Clark. There's mom sitting with the fellas. Mom and dad, Brent, and her brothers, Blake and Colin. They all become celebrities here in Iowa as well. And Clark with rebound number six. Will she play enough minutes as she picks up her 10th assist? So she's got the double double. Will she vision in transition? I don't even know how she found. Sonato in transition, delivered on the money, and Sonato does what she does best. That's finish. Team points has not missed a shot. And that's all in the last three quarters. She didn't have a point in the first 10 minutes. She was a passer first, and now getting her, her chances. With a nice putback and a foul on Sonano. As Juju Redmond will try and put a capper on her stellar career. Well, wide open look that Illinois State has been able to create, but more importantly, Juju Redmond stays with the play, doesn't even come down, puts it up and in. All Missouri Valley. She has joined the likes of Christy uh, Cerrone, Katie Donovan, Karen Brood, the other Redbirds that have led the conference in scoring over the years. Sonano will depart with four fouls as Juju now has 22 points on the day. Well, and this, the Missouri Valley Conference is a two-bid league. It does speak to the strength of this league. The Missouri State got an at-large bid, won last night over Florida State. So, again, it, this is not just a team that got lucky in the Missouri Valley Conference. They beat the top teams to get here, just unfortunately facing a really hot Iowa team today. As Iowa tries to win their eighth game in a row, you know, the other big question moving forward for all of the mid-majors, when you have a, a hot coach, when you've had somebody that has engineered the kind of turnaround that Kristen Gillespie has that gets her team into the NCAA tournament, uh, other folks come court, <laughs> And uh, we'll see if she will remain with Illinois State. It's been a, a terrific marriage between her entire family and the Illinois State Athletic Department and Administration and and it's resulted in a whole lot of success as you see what's happened from the five years before to the five years since. But even more than that, three straight years before Kristen arrived, a single-digit wins. 
much. And, I mean, she did it through culture. She did it through her teaching. And, and this was a fun shoot around to watch yesterday. Very defensive driven. I thought the game plan was on point. It's just really yeah. tough to have a game plan against both that stops both Caitlin Clark and Monica Sonano. There's a job open down the street from her. There's a jo job or two open in her native Atlantic Coast Conference where she played under legendary head coach Kay Yao and uh, helped the Wolfpack get to a Final Four. Got a shout out from her cousin, Terry Gannon, who of course played for Jimmy V at NC State on the men's side. And the NC State women glad to have Elisa Kunane healthy and ready to go again. The reigning champs in both the regular season and the ACC tournament. Well, and, and there was a lot of teams that had some injury question marks coming into today. And, and more often than not, it's been good news. The only negative is Jordan Horson probably still not available, but Kunane yeah. available, Kate Reese available for Arizona. We want our best players on yeah. the biggest stage. Elizabeth Kitley bowed out with Virginia Tech, but not before putting up, what, 42 points today? Florida Gulf Coast got a big upset win. Here comes Clark. She'll pull up. Transition three. And now with 27 for Clark. 10 assists, 6 rebounds. She averaged 26, 5, and 6 last year in the NCAA tournament in their three games. She's been big on the big stage. With this kind of pull-up three-point jumpers, what a layup would be for the rest of us. Just money, and you hear the applause as she's going to the bench. An inch closer to a, a meeting with Creighton. Again, Iowa, the defense running two defenders at the shooter, Crompton. Shot clock winding down, got it off in time. The defensive effort, Illinois State now has missed 16 threes in a row. Uh, has just not been able to help them out and try and hang with Iowa. The uh, Hawkeyes, by the way, now at their season average. And they're going to put up some points. Gearbach, good. Number three. Another assist, 23rd on the afternoon. Well, for the Hawkeyes, and a look ahead to Creighton, the, the uh, Blue Jays, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. They've got several that can put it up. They uh, are number one in the country in assists, running their motion offense. It'll be interesting to see how they try and attack. Well, between these two teams, again, a score holds here. We're going to look at, at least on average, 53s being put up in this game <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> now the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more info, go to NCAA.com. The Creighton men's team will be playing Kansas tomorrow. Of course, the Iowa men got upset in the first round yesterday. I bet they just showed a shot of Jim Flannery scouting. What do you think his paper says? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing where she is at all times, defending her. It was fun yesterday at the Illinois State practice. They didn't even have to mention Clark's name. I know it was just pronouns. Her, where, where, know where she is. Where is her man? And everything runs through her and off her. And the rest of the Hawkeyes feed off of that. They have developed such a good rapport with one another. I think it's a big help too, Christy, that your top scorer and your superstar might just love a pass better than, than a shot, and everybody else tries to match that kind of passing ability. Well, nothing against the crowd here, but I think the biggest applause came from Caitlin Clark when that last three went yeah. down. 
A terrific teammate as well. Redmond, the kick out. And the three is good from Newland. Kale able to hit it. The Hawkeyes, the eighth time this year, over 90 points. On three separate occasions, they've hit the century mark this year. Strong move from A.J. Ettinger, just didn't have a finish. Inside, Wilson spins and scores. Good use of the offhand. Great footwork by Wilson. in the game for Iowa. Taiwo rebounds. Got some good games coming up in the next window. Coach Scuddy, including number one seed Louisville. And they'll be at home to take on Albany. That's at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. Still to come later tonight, the defending national champs, the Stanford Cardinal, 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2, taking on Montana State. And potential opponent down the road for the winner of this Iowa State first and second round matchups. Iowa State will be playing the late game tonight on ESPNU. They've got UT Arlington. And I still think that Georgia Dayton game is one to watch. The defense of Georgia versus the hot shooting, three point shooting of Dayton. Under a minute and a half to go. Redmond steps back and knocks it down. Juju with 24 and a nice hand right here from the Redbird faithful, as well as the Hawkeye fans for Juju and a home with a coach. For any basketball fan, what this young lady has done throughout her career, what she's done to elevate the national exposure now for Illinois State, tremendous player. Gets them back into the tournament for the first time since 2008. Off ball foul there. Champions of the Missouri Valley. <laughs> and those are all Iowa fans that are lined up hoping to get a, a picture, maybe a, a high five from Clark and the Hawkeyes on their way back to the locker room off the court post game. <laughs> I think they're just a couple of seats shy of another sellout on Sunday. Blocked inside by Edgar. Hannah Kelly kept it alive. And another offensive rebound. That one won't go from Lauren Cohen. Well, hats off to Illinois State. They have not quit in this game. They just couldn't find the bottom of the basket here this afternoon. Got the shots they wanted, couldn't knock them down. Then the two seed in the Greensboro region set to advance. They will meet the 10 seed Creighton on Sunday afternoon. Time to be determined. And uh, should look a lot like this again in about 48 hours here inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. For Iowa, Caitlin Clark, 27 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. And a perfect afternoon for Monica Sonano, 6 of 6 from the floor, 6 of 6 
from the free throw line. Marshall there on the left, she hit three threes. And so did Tomi Taiwo, who's at the free throw line. As the team combined for 12. 25 assists this afternoon for Iowa. Just beautiful team basketball for the Hawkeyes. And now 20 of 21 at the strike here this afternoon. Juju Redmond closes out her career with 25. Crompton also in double digits with 11 for the champions of the Missouri Valley. But today it is the champions of the Big Ten. The Iowa Hawkeyes advancing 98 to 58. Your final. I'll ask one, then you can ask a couple. Program record, most points scored in the tournament.